Okay, so today we're going to learn how to the derivative rule for log functions and for inverse functions in general, how to come up with a derivative rule um, for an inverse trig function. And you can use this method for any inverse function. If you know the derivative of a function and you want to know the derivative of its inverse, you can generalize the method that we're going to do today. Both steel drum and pipeline are due Wednesday. Um, please bring your textbook or arrange for one person in your group to have a textbook uh, next class. Okay, so last class, last time I saw you, Wednesday last week, we talked about um, log functions as the inverse of exponential functions, which means that e to the ln of x equals x, because exponentials and logs undo each other, right? So if you take the log and then do e to that thing, you get x back. So I'm going to start with this true equation. I know it's true because those things are inverses. And I'm just going to take the derivative of both sides. So that is a legal move. As long as I do the same thing to both sides of an equation, we're good. Take the derivative of both sides. All right, what is the derivative of x? 1. Okay. What is the derivative of e to some stuff? e to some stuff times mm, e to, derivative of the stuff, yeah. So I'm just going to write that as d dx of the stuff. Right, the derivative of e to some stuff is e to that stuff times the derivative of the stuff. Now this is an equation, and I'm going to solve it for d dx of the ln of x. So then I'll end up with a formula for the derivative of the ln. So I have this equation. I'm just going to solve it. I want to get d dx, the derivative of the ln of x by itself. So I would divide both sides by e to the ln of x. But what is e to the ln of x equal? x, because they're inverse functions. So this is 1 over x. The derivative of ln x is 1 over x. Yep. Well, you'll do that in the group activities. So what is the derivative of the ln of some stuff? As opposed to just the ln of x, but now the ln of a composition. 1 over stuff times the derivative of the stuff. So this is a method you can always use to find the derivative of an inverse trig function. If you know the derivative of the function itself, you can find the derivative of its inverse by composing your two functions, a function and its inverse, to get x. That's the definition of inverse functions. When you compose them, you get x. And then taking the derivative of both sides. All right, so we're going to do a little practice with taking derivatives of lns, and then we're going to use this same technique on uh, an inverse trig function. Okay, I've got the ln of some stuff here. y equals the ln of x cubed minus 7x. So the derivative of the ln of some stuff we just said is 1 over the stuff times the derivative of the stuff. And the derivative of the stuff in this case is three x squared minus seven. And then you could simplify that, just multiply across three x squared minus seven over x cubed minus seven x. How about the ln of x quantity to the seventh? What is the outside function this time? To the seventh, yeah, x to the seventh. So I apply the power rule to the outside function. So y prime is going to be seven. This is like some stuff to the seventh power. So we apply the power rule, seven times the ln of x to the sixth. Then we multiply times the derivative of the inside, which is 1 over x.
questions so far? Okay, let's find the derivative of the inverse sine function using the same method that we did for the ln. Start with some true equation. I know that the sine of the inverse sine of x is x. Right? When you compose two inverse functions, you get x back. That's what it means to be inverses. So I'm going to start with that equation, take the ddx of both sides. I'm just going to take the derivative of the sine of the inverse sine of x. And that should equal ddx of x. All right, but ddx of x, that is 1. And this is the derivative of the sine of some stuff. What is the derivative of the sine of some stuff? Cosine of the stuff. So this is cosine of the inverse sine of x times the derivative of the stuff, and in this case, the stuff is inverse sine. We don't have a formula for that. That's the whole point of the exercise. We're trying to come up with a formula for the derivative of the inverse sine. So at this point, all I can write down is d dx of the inverse sine of x. And then I want to get d dx of the inverse sine of x by itself here. How would I try to isolate the derivative of the inverse sine? Yeah, just divide by the coefficient. Yep, the cosine of the inverse sine of x. So the derivative of the inverse sine of x is 1 over the cosine of the inverse sine of x. But we're not done. That would be too easy. We can simplify this expression, 1 over the cosine of the inverse sine of x. This is like a problem you might have seen in um, pre-calc, right? Simplify this trig expression that involves trig and inverse trig. And the trick we're going to use is a right triangle. So I'm almost done here. I'm just going to leave a, a blank for simplifying that. And I'm going to draw a triangle. I'm going to say let the inverse sine of x equal. When you take the inverse sine of something, what is the output in terms of the unit circle? It's an angle. Yeah, and, it, and for sine, it's between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. But yeah, the whole idea is that it's an angle. When you take the inverse sine of something, you're looking on the, on the um, unit circle for a y coordinate, and you're out, that's your input, and then your output is an angle. So I'm going to let the inverse sine of x be, we're just going to call that theta. So if the inverse sine of x is theta, that means that the sine of theta is x. True? Yep. OK. So if I draw a right triangle, and I put theta in there, the sine of theta is x, we'll think of that as like x over 1, opposite over hypotenuse, x over 1. And that means that the third side, if I use the Pythagorean theorem, x squared plus this adjacent side squared has to equal 1. This comes out to the square root of 1 minus x squared. So when I want to take the cosine of the inverse sine of x, I'm actually wanting to take the cosine of theta, because theta is the inverse sine of x. What is the cosine of theta in this picture? The square root of 1 minus x squared over 1. Right? So this is 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. So that is the derivative of the inverse sine. 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. Which means that the inverse sine of some stuff 
would be 1 over the square root of 1 minus some stuff squared times the derivative of the stuff. So I won't ask you to derive, um, well, I'm not going to say that. I might. Never mind. You can use a really uh, a similar technique to derive the um, formula for the arctan or inverse tan of x. Start by saying the tangent of the inverse tangent equals x. And I'm going to have you do that in the group activities. All right, so let's just do one more practice problem where we do some derivatives with inverse trig functions, and then I'll let you work on your own. So I want to take the derivative of the inverse sine of 5x. Let's just be clear. There's parentheses there and there. So the inverse sine of 5x divided by the arctan, which just means the same thing as the inverse tan um, of x cubed. So what overarching rule do we start with here? Quotient rule. This is the derivative of a quotient. So I'm going to have the denominator, arctan of x cubed, times the derivative of the numerator, inverse sine of 5x, minus the numerator, inverse sine of 5x, times the derivative of the denominator, which is arctan x cubed, all over the denominator squared. Yep, same thing. Different notation mean the same thing. Arctan and tan with that negative one notation. All right, so now I just apply the derivative rules that we just learned within the quotient rule to do this part and this part. So I've got arctan of x cubed. The derivative of the inverse sine of 5x, that's the inverse sine of some stuff. So this is going to be 1 over the square root of 1 minus 5x squared. That's the derivative rule for inverse sine, 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared, or stuff squared, times the derivative of the stuff, which in this case is 5, minus the inverse sine of 5x, times the derivative of the arctan of x cubed, the arctan of 1 over 1 plus x squared, is 1 over, sorry, that is the derivative of arctan. So the arctan of x cubed, its derivative is 1 over 1 plus x cubed squared. Yeah. Derivative of what? The stuff? Um, the stuff is just 5x. This is the arc sine of some stuff. So the stuff is just 5x. Um, you don't have to. Like, this is a really complicated derivative. And in general, simplifying is harder than actually taking the derivative. So just write it all out first, and then if you're asked to simplify, then you can work on the algebra. Try, I, I try not to do the algebra as I go, because I will just make a mistake. First, I just write down the derivative. OK, so I'm working on taking the derivative of the arctan of x cubed. The derivative of the arctan of some stuff, I should have written that in, is 1 over 1 plus the stuff squared times the derivative of the stuff. 
So I have 1 over 1 plus x cubed squared. That's 1 over 1 plus stuff squared times the derivative of the stuff. And then this is all over arctan of x cubed squared. So there's my derivative. Yeah, it's a pretty one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so this is one of the ones where you could spend a whole page or pages simplifying it. Don't bother.